For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The Word of God, the Bible proclaims, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture. He was buried, as you would do with any dead person. And he arose again the third day according to the scripture, which doesn't happen to a dead man. The gospel in three points. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. The prophecy of God that fulfilled God in prophecies 100% or there's nothing at all. There are 48 prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ and they were fulfilled, 48 of them, 100 out of 100%. And yet there are more prophecies of the tribulation period of the second coming of Jesus Christ, of the millennial kingdom of Jesus Christ, and yet a new heavens, a new earth, and new Jerusalem. All prophecies. And the 48 prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ were fulfilled. I guarantee to tell you that the prophecy of Jesus Christ coming again will be fulfilled. I am here to tell you that there will be a time called the Great Tribulation of seven years, of Jacob's trouble, according to the scriptures, according to the prophecies of God. And yet there's one prophecy of, of the Bible that's not yet preached. Everybody's in love with the Antichrist. Everybody's in love with the Great Tribulation period, but no one loves a prophecy in the Bible that God said, if you to die without Jesus Christ, you will burn in a place of hell, and yes, that's prophecy. That is something that has not yet been seen, but has been told by God, and it will happen. By the one that created God, the Matthew. Matthew says that the, that the hell was created for the Satan and his angels. And yet, if man dies in his sin without believing Jesus Christ as his Savior, you'll be cast off into hell, and then into the lake of fire that burneth forever. Hell is a prophecy as much as heaven is a prophecy, as heaven is the positiveness through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Hell is prophecy for those who choose to reject Jesus Christ. You see, the mode of God is that he is long-suffering. And God is not willing that any should perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. God said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them about heaven and tell them about hell. Tell them about the consequences of their decision. If you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not only go to a place called heaven, but the prophecies speak about a place called New Jerusalem. A city of gold, a city garnished with all precious gems and stones. A city where the sun is not needed, nor the moon. A city where God is the King and on the throne and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. A city where Christians will be without pain, without suffering. In a brand new Bible, in a brand new body, the Bible says. A new name. In the gates of Jerusalem there will be no more sinners. No more sin. No more lies. No more death. No more religion. And all to be all for the Lord Jesus Christ forever, the one that suffered and died and arose from the grave according to the scriptures. Your faith in Jesus Christ will get you to God for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, the negative, hell, 
if you choose to reject Jesus Christ as your Savior. You choose to go any pathway of man. You choose to go any way with Satan. The Bible speaks about hell as burning, as torment, as torture, as hell fire for all eternity because you have chosen not to believe on what God said to believe. And the condition of man that we are in today is because man will not do what God says. God told Adam, do not eat of that fruit of that tree, and he did. And what is the consequences of eating that fruit? We have hospitals. We have a police department. We have crime. We have jails. We have people getting shot. We have people dying. We have cancers. We've got doctors and nurses. Because Adam would not believe what God said and went contrary to the Word of God. And if you go contrary to the Word of God to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, you will get an eternity of hell and then into the lake of fire that burneth forever. If you were to do what God told you to do, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, the gift of God, of eternal life, the pain, the suffering after death is gone. Now, salvation will not take care of your pain and your sorrows today. I am not going to tell you get saved and your cancer will be healed. I am not going to tell you get saved, believe on Jesus Christ, and your life will be hunky-dory and wonderful. I am not saying that. Salvation may even get you worse problems. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But when you die, you die with your name in the Lamb's book of life and you will be reserved a spot in heaven. Where we will get no, a new body. Where we will have no more pain and suffering. And without sin. Without departure. You see, Jesus Christ, painless, <laughs> Satan, pain, Jesus Christ, glory and mercy and wonderful, Satan, torment and torture, Jesus Christ, forever to be with God the Creator. Satan forever to be in the place of hell of torment. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. In the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. There are some people that will come up to us and say, what you're doing is not in the Bible. Jesus would not do what you're doing, sir. And before you come up here and tell us what you think Jesus has done, before you open your big mouth on never reading and studying the Bible, we're going to set forth that what we are doing here by preaching the gospel is no new thing of the Bible. Preaching on the streets is a biblical thing. Preaching on the streets is the preacher, the man by God, telling the people what God has to say. And usually it is a means of judgment. And before God judges anybody, God will send somebody to preach or teach to those people what to do. In the book of Jonah, God was going to destroy the Ninevites. 
in the short version of Jonah, Jonah went in there and preached 40 days and 40 nights, this city shall be overthrown. And they repented of their sins, and God repented of the judgment at that time. Now, Nineveh was destroyed. But Nineveh was in trouble. Nineveh had the cup filled before God, and God was going to pass judgment, and he sent Jonah in there to go preach. And they believed the preaching of Jonah and sought the repentance to God. And God repented of the judgment that was to follow on them. And God said today, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them that there's a heaven and there's a hell. And put the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. When I quote from this King James Bible, it is wisdom. It is not my wisdom. It is the wisdom of God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I only proclaim to you what the words say. I do not add to the words. I do not add to the thought of the words. And we step out on Saturday mornings. We bring the wisdom of God to you. The wisdom that Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. Now there will be sometimes some women here with pamphlets and other kinds of garbage that does not match the Bible. But we bring the Bible, the wisdom of God. Wisdom cries out, Proverbs chapter 1, in the street. Proverbs chapter 1 speaks about street preaching. So before you come up and say, that's not in the Bible, you've got to read Proverbs chapter 1. You've got to read where Jesus preached on a boat to a beach. You've got to read where Jesus preached on a mountain. Wisdom cries out. So what you are annoyed with, what you are aggravated with to hear the preacher every Saturday, is you are not aggravated with the preacher, you are aggravated with the biblical wisdom of Jesus Christ. You're not angry with me. You're angry with God. And if I were to take this stuff down, and if I were to pack it in the car, and if I were to bring my money to your booth, you would be happy to receive my money for your merchandise, so you are not angry with me. You are angry with the Word of God and the mercy of God and the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is to say, hey, Keep on going where you're going. Without Jesus, you're going to hell. The wisdom of God, if you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you would go to a place that you would get a new body, no more suffering, no more death, no more sin. That's the wisdom of God. That's the wisdom that's in the scriptures. I'm not reading from tea leaves. There is no crystal ball. It is the King James 1611 Bible that the Holy Spirit has brought to us that we might read. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Wisdom cries without, she utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concourse. Concourse. That's a kind of big word. Concourse, where business takes place, where business is happening. And 
you got to understand in the Old Testament, in the cities, there was no Walmart. There was no hardware store. You had little booths. And upon this booth would be fruits and vegetables. And on this booth would be baskets and basket trees. And on this booth there would be pigeons and meat. And on that booth there would be arts and crafts. You see the fact is that the flea market is an idea of what the city of the children of Israel were like were little booths with little each individual things that you could sell or buy or trade. And God says, where that trading, where that business is done, you take wisdom and go there and preach the wisdom. So according to the Bible, as you do your business of concourse, I do the, the business of God to preach the word of God. I carried forth the word of God where business is taken care of, where people would gather. It would be no good for me to stand in an empty parking lot and preach the gospel where there are no people. It would be good for the word of God to go every Saturday where there are people, where there are different people, where there are same people, and preach the same gospel week after week after week. That's a Bible order, chapter 1, verse 21 of Proverbs. And if you want to know why we are here, Mark 16, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. Amen, sweet Jesus. And Proverbs chapter 1, 21. And there's not a perfect place in Daytona Beach but that of the farmer's market, which was like the farmers, like the markets of Israel. And God says, go down in them streets and preach. The only difference is we got Gentiles here and Jews, but there are primary Jews at this time in the writing. The Bible goes forth in Proverbs. How long, ye simple ones, Will you love simplicity? One of the target, our, uh, one of the target people that we deal with every week are simple people, and that's not nothing to make fun of. They do what they're supposed to do. They are obedient to the laws. They live. They work. They do what they're supposed to do. They're simple. And yet God says there's something more to your living. There's something more than your job. And taking care of your family. Because that is great. That is wonderful. That is what all men are to do. But you are to come out of your simplicity and step aboard of all the people that have a home that have a job, that take care of their family. You are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Rise above simplicity. You see, the Bible says many will go the broad way. But few will go through the straight gate that leadeth to life. The simple ones go on and live, and do, and fall off into hell when they die. And they don't come out. And they may not be evil, they may not be wicked, they maybe never killed anybody, but they have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's the simple life. You do what you're supposed to do, and then you die and go to hell. But you are to rise above it.
by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There is no salvation in anything else or any other. The simple go to church. The simple go to synagogue. The simple go to college, they go to school. And yet they still die and go off into hell. What made them by being simple? By not obeying the word of God to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If you have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, I don't care what state you are of living, you are simple. Simple ones go to hell. They will not rise. You see, it takes a man or a woman to come to Christ and say, I am a sinner, and I need God to save my soul. A simpleton will say, oh, my priest will do it. My church will do it. My awards will do it. My money will do it. I'm a good person will do it. That's a simpleton. I'll simply let something else do it besides Jesus Christ. And there are many simpletons here in Daytona Beach. Will you come out and step up to God and say and pray that you are the sinner that Jesus Christ suffered and died for upon that cross? Here I come. I'm coming to be saved. They do. Before God, we still will show short. And yet God loves us enough that He, God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. He left heaven and came down this miserable world and lived a life that we cannot live. He was, he was holy and He was sinless. He slept, He hungered, He walked, He talked, He even cried. He's done everything we've done but without sin. The Bible says if you look upon a woman and lust after her in your heart, it's far rain from your throat. He never looked out upon a woman like that. I see what you're saying. And I'm not talking about, hey, I didn't sleep with anybody. We, the Bible says all you have to do is think. Now what you need to come to realize right now is you are a sinner. There is nothing you can do. Let me show you something. So right from the Bible all along. Book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. That's what you do, Phil. You're going to die. When? I don't know. I'm going to die. All right? Yeah, I'm that, that, That's what you can do right there. Your sin gives you death. I don't believe in death like that. So God, 
that story with me. God's with me, he's with me. <laughs> You're going to die one day. How's that? Oh, oh Lord, don't do it. Everyone's going to die. die. Yeah, when the world comes to an end. No. <laughs> You're going to come to a life expectancy that whatever age it is, I don't know. You're going to close your eyes, you're going to stop breathing, your heart pain, stop pumping, and you will be dead on the ground. Alright? Alright, thank you. The simplicity. It's simple. You are a sinner. And there is no hope in what you can do. But you make it complex. And salvation is simple as to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And you simply believe other things. Except the simple salvation of God that to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Proverbs 1.22 And scorners delight in their scorning. Now we all know of four years at the farmer's market that many of you who are vendors who are here every week, we know you are a scorner. We know that you hate God, the God of the Bible. You hate the preaching. You would joy to see us leave. And sometimes when we packed up, you even applaud us leaving. You ridicule, make fun, talk about the preacher on the street over there. That is people number two we deal with with the street ministry. And any ministry. People who make fun of the preacher and the word of God and God. The Bible calls you scorners. And you are linked in with simpletons. But you're not really linked in with the saved people because saved people would not make fun of the Bible and the preaching. That's not a fruit of the Spirit. To go up to someone preaching the gospel and to give them a hard time. That would be definitely one sign that you are not saved. That would be definitely a sign to say you are a scorner. And the Bible recognizes the fact that you scorn. And God is recording it. You have not believed the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And then he was buried. And he arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You have ridiculed. You have mocked. You have made fun of the word of God. And you are found in the pages of the Bible. It's a shame. Because mockers and scorners do not go inside the gate of New Jerusalem. You cannot please a God that you do not like. You may think you're cute. You may think you're a smart donkey. But the Bible calls you a scorner. You need to break that pride. You need to break that sin. 
and put it upon the cross of the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 22. And fools hate knowledge. Twice in the Psalms, the Bible says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. And if you are here at the Daytona Beach Farmer Market, and you are saying at any time, before, during, or after we are here preaching the gospel, and you say there is no God, God and His Bible call you a fool. I did not say that. Psalms and Proverbs calls an atheist a fool. King James, 1611 Bible, authorized by God and approved by the Holy Spirit. There are people who are just so simple. They will not believe on Jesus Christ. There are squatters who make fun of Jesus Christ. And there are fools who do not believe on Jesus Christ. Those are the three many people we preach here today. Never mind last week. Today we are preaching to simpletons. We are preaching to scorners, and we are preaching to fools. The fourth group would be those who are saved and love the Lord and are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Some of you come up and say, hey, I thank you for being here. Some of you hopefully are praying for us. And some of you, like Saul, is hiding amongst the stuff. You don't want to be revealed. Even Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. We do not come to the farmer's market to get results. Wow. We come here because God said, preach the gospel. God said, put the seed out. Water the seed. And God giveth the increase. And God is completely able to make the plants grow when we are not watching. Or later. Our job as street preachers here is to preach the gospel. To simpletons. To scorners. To fools. And to the saved. That if you are not saved, you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. But it's your option. And the Bible records if they scorn at you, you already read they're going to scorn, so don't give up. Matter of fact, this is a warning. The more you scorn, the better I feel. Because I know you're listening. If you didn't scorn, ridicule, or say anything stupid, I would not believe you were listening. And if you are listening, then it's time to preach about Jesus that he saves. And you do not have to be a simpleton anymore. You do not have to continue in your scorning. 
And you can no longer be a fool if you put your faith and trust by your heart and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You see, the simpleton, the scorner, and the fool have something in common. If they die and go to hell, with, if they die without Jesus Christ, they go to hell. And I have not talking about degrees of sin. For all have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. What does the whole human race have in common? We're all sinners. And we need Jesus Christ to get to the Father. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Simpletons, scorners, and fools. The Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach that gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That you that are lost, today you may be saved. Now, you can get saved tomorrow, if you're still living. You can get saved next month, if you're still living. You can get saved next year, if you're still living. But we have a problem. We don't know when we're going to die. Preacher, I believe what you're saying about Jesus, but I'll get saved next year. You don't know if you have a Saturday. You don't even know if you're going to fulfill this Saturday. You may not even make it to afternoon. It's 10 to 12 right now. You are unsure when you will die, so believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now. It's a point unto what man wants to die. We have no idea when that's going to happen. And saying I'm going to get saved later does not save you now. And fools end up in hell. Because a fool that dies, a man that dies and goes off into hell turns into a fool. You say, well, how do you say that? Because you have not believed God with your heart. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And if you die and wake up in hell, you have not believed God from your heart. And the biblical classification is a man in hell is a fool. So hell is filled with atheists who have not believed in the God, in the way, in the truth, and in the life. Now you may believe in another God of any religion or any education. But if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are godless, you are hopeless, you are faithless, and you will not enter into the glory of the Father before His throne. 
We preach on the streets because God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. We preach at the farmer's market because Proverbs chapter 1 says, where there's commerce, where there's concord, where there's business, where there are people, go and preach the gospel. And you are in one of four ca categories of the Bible. You are a simpleton. You are a scorner. You are a fool. Or you are saved. And only those who are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ goes to heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's all. Come out of your simplicity. Come out of your scorning. Stop being a fool, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.